Welcome, soccer friend, to the magical world of soccer bedtime stories, where dreams and goals come together. I'm your host, Tomek, and I'm here to accompany you on a journey through the stories of some of the greatest players, games, and tournaments as you drift off to sleep. If this is your first time visiting our soccer dream world, and you enjoy the story, we welcome you to follow and subscribe to listen to all the stories in our library. If you are a returning soccer dreamer, we encourage you to review, comment, star, and like the stories you love most. Your feedback and ideas help us get better and help to expand our soccer dreaming community. Please reach out to us. It's as easy as a pass to a friend. You can just email us at soccerbedtimestories at gmail.com. Enjoy the story, sleep well, and dream big. As we embark on our adventure, soccer friend, let's take a deep breath and imagine that we are all snuggled up in a cozy blanket, surrounded by warmth and comfort. Tonight's story is one that will transport us to a magical world where anything is possible. We'll meet heroes, or maybe some villains, travel to far off lands, and experience incredible adventures together. So let's close our eyes, relax, and get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey that will fill our dreams with wonder and excitement. The Hand of Destiny When Uruguay Met Ghana once upon a time, when the fields were green and the fans were loud, people all around the world were turning on their television sets to watch the World Cup quarterfinal. Ghana was facing off against Uruguay in Johannesburg, South Africa at Soccer City Stadium. The stands were packed. A small section of blue near the half line cheering on the boys from Uruguay and the rest of the 85,000 spectator stadium filled with green, yellow, and red of Ghana. It seemed like all of Africa, maybe even the world, was there to cheer on the black stars. Ghana was just the third African country to advance to this stage of the tournament's history, and had done so overcoming the United States in the earlier round. Uruguay, a small nation with a population of just about 3 million, had defeated not only Mexico in the previous round, but host nation South Africa in the group stage as well. As the players entered the stadium, the melodic hum of the Vuvuzela welcomed them. The South African horn had come to fame during the tournament, and it appeared that each of the 90,000 spectators had one. Sounding like a French horn or a tuba, or even like a thousand buzzing bees, the stage was set for one of the most dramatic World Cup games in history. From the opening whistle, Uruguay asserted their dominance, dictating the tempo and displaying their formidable skills that had gotten them to this place in the tournament. The game turned just a little bit when in a cruel twist of fate, Uruguay's captain, the stalwart Diego Lugano, fell victim to injury. The team was left shaken, grappling with the absence of their leader. Seizing this moment of vulnerability, Ghana pounced. Sui Muntari, an embodiment of determination, seized the ball gracefully, turned into a gap left open by Uruguay's defense. With unparalleled precision and power, he unleashed a thunderous strike from an astonishing 40 yards Surprising the defenders, the goalie, the crowd, maybe even himself. The strike sent the ball hurtling in the back of the net. Ghana, South Africa, and the entirety of the African continent erupted in jubilation. Their dreams of victory and a spot in the semifinal turned from dream into reality. Ghana was winning 1-0. The halftime whistle blew and Uruguay retreated to their locker room, their spirits wounded but not broken. A whispered determination filled the air as they huddled together, the words of their coach fueling their resolve. 
The second half began and Uruguay emerged like warriors ready to reclaim their destiny. Diego Forlan, a maestro of the beautiful game, took charge. In the 54th minute with a free kick awarded to Uruguay on the left side of the field, anticipation rippled through the crowd. Forlan, with an unwavering focus, positioned some himself behind the ball. A hush fell over the stadium as he meticulously calculated his strike. Swift motion, he sent the ball soaring through the air, curling it with finesse. Guinean goalkeeper Richard Kingston leaped desperately, but the ball eluded his outstretched fingertips. It was a moment of sheer brilliance as the ball nestled into the net, drawing Uruguay level. The crowd erupted in a chorus of awe and admiration, witnessing a true masterpiece unfold before their eyes. The game teetered on a knife's edge as both teams battled fiercely to secure victory. Sweaty brows and pounding hearts told the story of relentless determination. Chance after chance came and went, but neither side could break the deadlock. Ticked on and the match entered the realm of extra time. A realm where heroes and villains are born. With every passing minute, exhaustion clawed at the players, their bodies weary, yet their spirits refusing to yield. The echoes of the Vuvuzelas reverberated through the stadium, urging their heroes forward. Each tackle, each shot, became a defining moment, etching itself into the tapestry of this epic encounter. As the click clock ticked towards the end of extra time, tension hung heavy in the air. Ghana, determined to secure victory, was awarded a crucial free kick, their last hope to snatch the win. Soccer City Stadium held its breath as the ball flew towards the penalty area, carrying the hopes and dreams of nation and continent. Amidst the chaos of bodies jostling for position, Stephen Apia unleashed a fierce shot towards the goal. It seemed destined for glory, a defining moment that would send Ghana into a euphoric frenzy. But fate had other plans. Players stabbed at the ball, the rebound fell perfectly to Dominique Adia, whose header seemed destined to find the back of the net to etch Ghana's name in golden letters. However, it was not to be. Out of this chaos emerged Luis Suarez, a man possessed by desperation and will to protect his team's chances. With a burst of instinct, Suarez launched himself towards the incoming ball, sacrificing his body for the cause. In a move that would divide opinions and become the subject of heated debates, he resorted to using his hands to block the shot on the goal line. Gasps of disbelief echoed through the stadium as the referee blew his whistle and swiftly brandished the red card, banishing Suarez from the pitch. It was an act born of desperation, a split-second decision with monumental consequences. The tension was palpable as Asimov Guion stepped up to take the penalty kick, his nation's hopes resting squarely on his shoulders. The deafening roar of the South African horn seemed to fade into the background, replaced by a deafening silence that enveloped the stadium. All eyes were fixed on the Ghanaian striker, his every moment magnified under the weight of the moment. Guion took a few steps back, his gaze focused on the goal in front of him. The pressure was immense, but he executed an air of confidence. His determination shining through with a deep breath, he began his approach, sprinting towards the ball with purpose, his mind unwavering. The ball soared with power and precision, its trajectory carrying the dreams and aspirations of an entire continent. Goalkeeper, a figure shrouded in anticipation, leaped with all his might, his outstretched hands reaching towards the heavens in a desperate attempt to deny Guion the glory. Fate ever the capricious mistress had other ideas. Ball struck the crossbar with a resounding thud, echoing through the silence like a cruel symphony of shattered dreams. The stadium erupted in a caffeine of gasps and groans, 
the collective heartbreak of Africa reverberating through the stands, a sudden realization of how cruel and beautiful came could be. In those fleeting moments, the world witnessed the clash of emotions, the thin line between triumph and heartbreak. Suarez, vilified by some and hailed by others, had become both a hero and a villain in the span of a few heart-stopping seconds. Bumping his fists in the air, Suarez raced to the locker room, ejected. The referee blew the whistle, and his epic match matchup turned to penalties. The penalties began with a moment of soccer courage for the history books. As Samoa Kian, having experienced the bitter disappointment of a missed penalty just minutes earlier, stepped up with determination. He positioned the ball on the spot, focused and ready. The weight of his nation once again resting on his shoulders. With a confident stride, he approached the ball, his mind clear and resolute. With precision and power, he struck the ball, sending it towards the goal. 1-0 in penalties to Ghana. His previous miss avenged. The shootout now continued, both teams displaying nerves of steel as each penalty taker found the back of the net. Tension grew with every successful strike, the fate of the match hanging by a thread. Then, a moment of brilliance emerged from Uruguay's goalkeeper, Fernando Muslera, as Jonathan Mensa, Ghana's captain, stepped up to take his penalty. Muslera drew a dove with the lightning reflexes, denying Mensa's efforts and keeping Uruguay's hopes alive. The stadium erupted in a mix of disbelief and jubilation, pendulum swinging in favor of Uruguay. However, the shootout continued with its unpredictable course, as defender Maxi Pereira of Uruguay sent his penalty sailing over the bar. Again gasps throughout the crowd. This seemed like an opportunity for Ghana to seize the advantage once more. However, fate and other plans, Muslera, proving to be formidable presence between the posts, saved the following kick from Dominica Dia, defying Ghana's aspirations. So, it all came down to the final penalty. Sebastian Abreu of Uruguay stepped forward, a sense of calm exuding from him. The weight of the moment was not lost on him as he prepared to take this crucial shot. Abreu executed a daring and audacious Panenka-style chip. The ball floated delicately like a feather into the net, leaving the Ghanaian goalkeeper hopelessly out of place and sending the Uruguayan fans into a frenzy of jubilation. The final whistle blew, sealing Uruguay's victory in a shootout that had kept the world on the edge of its seat. The clash between Uruguay and Ghana would forever be remembered as a battle of courage, skill, and unyielding determination, a tale of injury, redemption, and the unforgiving nature of sport. It served as a reminder that in the realm of football, where giants collide and dreams hang in the balance, anything is possible, even something cruel and unjust. This day, the debate rages around Luis Suarez's actions. Did he cheat? Is he a hero? What would you have done in that situation with an opportunity for World Cup glory? An answer lies somewhere far away, Perhaps in our dreams. Sleep well, soccer friend, and dream big. Hey, soccer friends. If you enjoy soccer bedtime stories, you might also enjoy the Soccer Time Machine podcast. It is a soccer history daily for kids by kids. Join our young soccer fans on an epic adventure through the history of the beautiful game. From legendary players to historic moments, we'll explore it all in a fun and engaging way that's perfect for young soccer fans like you. 
So grab your jerseys and get ready to kick off this exciting journey with the Soccer Time Machine podcast on August 1st, wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe and follow to make sure you don't miss an episode. Now, off to our bedtime story, Sweet Soccer Dreams.